Good day, leaders, and welcome back to Semper Admin, your go-to resource for mastering administrative tasks. In today's video, we will be covering relative and absolute cell referencing in Microsoft Excel. Before we dive in, let's just quickly discuss why it's crucial for Marines to understand what this is and how it's utilized. Understanding the difference between relative and absolute cell referencing can help you create a more efficient, accurate formulas, which is essential for analyzing data and making decisions in your administrative duties. So the first thing we're going to do is I have two tables here. So my first table is going to be this one that already exists. And then we're going to make that table come over here into this new table based on these different types of cell referencing. So the first one that I always do is I do equals. And let's just say I want this to equal this exact cell. What you'll see is that this is now equal to cell B3, B3. By copying this, I can just paste it over everything. And now all these cells have automatically adjusted based on the relativeness of the original. So since this one was B3, and now this cell is one cell below, it's become B4. That was two cells below, and that's why, or two rows below, and that's why it's B5. And then over to the right, it's C3, keeping in that same order, because this has not been set to any absolute reference. This is just defaulted across the board, and that's what you see here. Now, when we come in here, we can actually set a standard for what this information looks like. So to do this, this is where you're going to come in here and add some of those dollar signs. So if I want to make an absolute value of, let's make this B3. So this is B3. And then if I paste this over like I did before, all of these are now B3 because the information has not changed its absolute reference because I said I want this exact cell. So no matter what I do with that function or that formula, copy, paste, drag down, it's always going to reference that exact cell that I have because I've locked it both by column and by row. So that's pretty cool that we can look at that. Now we can actually do this just by one of those types of factors. So if I want to lock the column, the B, I could take this and again, drag it across. So all these are Bs. And then if I drag them down, you'll see that these Bs have come down, but these Bs have all stayed the same. So came over here, but all that stuff there kept the Bravo for that column, but it allowed the rows to change as needed because I did not lock that row. So that's another way to look at that. But here, now we can take out that and actually just do it for the row itself. So if I wanted to lock in the row, so this is row B7. If I come up here, these are all B7 because that's what I tried to reference there. But if I bring these over to the right and drag them over, this is doing C7, all of them, so on and so forth. Same thing happens if I was to copy and paste. It all references that same row, but now different columns because I did not lock that column. Okay, so back to the beginning, looking at what this would look like. Now, there's a way for you to toggle between these. So instead of actually having to type in those dollar signs like we did here, usually whenever I come up to my new function and I type it in, you're going to do F4. Oh, you're going to come in here and type F4 next to it. And F4 will actually go through and it will identify the different relative values that you're looking at. And you can see how here how I can toggle between all those different options. So that's pretty cool that that's a little shortcut that we have to make sure that we're doing that properly. Before we wrap it up, I just wanna point out a few common mistakes to avoid or tips to keep in mind while working with relative and absolute cell referencing. Uh, always use relative referencing when you want formulas to adjust automatically when copied to the new cells. Use absolute referencing when you're gonna keep specific cells fixed in a formula, regardless of where they're copied to. And then mix relative and absolute referencing in a single formula when needed to create powerful and dynamic calculations. To quickly recap, today we covered the relative and absolute value cell referencing in Excel, including under uh, understanding the difference between the two, creating absolute references, and toggling between relative and absolute referencing using that F4 key. Remember, mastering these concepts will help you become more of an efficient and effective Marine in your administrative duties. That's it for today's video. If you found this content helpful or if you learned anything, be sure to like, share, and subscribe to Semper Admin for more instructional videos on the Marine Corps Administrative Duties. Feel free to leave a comment below if you have any questions or suggestions for a future topic. Until next time, stay motivated and Semper Fi.